What is up people of the internet? My name is Matthew and welcome to my channel. You probably clicked on this video because you wanted to see Warren Buffett's new investor warning. I'm in danger. And I'm here to bring it to you. Now off the bat, Warren Buffett says that investing is not as easy as it sounds. And though he may be right, we still have a lot to cover here. In the past year, looking back at your old portfolio, you've probably made a lot, a lot of money in the stock market. Money, 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 money. Stonks. But if you look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average, we saw it go from 23,000 to 34,000, adding more than 10,000 points overall. Looking at the S&P 500, that went up from 2,800 to 4,100, adding more than 1,000 points overall. And lastly, looking at the NASDAQ, that came from 8,700 all the way to 13,800, adding more than 5,000 points. So it's safe to say that the United States stock market grew at least anywhere between 40 to 50 percent. Nice. And I would not be surprised if you outperformed these indexes by buying any tech company out there like Tesla or Amazon, you probably made it. Since we have risen to all time highs and we're in this state of euphoria, many people think that it's very, very easy to make money in the stock market. The history says otherwise. But yes, do not get me wrong, when you are buying index funds and have a long term outlook of 30 years, you are definitely going to make money over the course of time. Tell them to bring me my money. Yeah. However, I'm talking about the people that want to go into individual stock picking and choose individual companies for themselves. I'm independent. I take my own decisions. I don't need any man in my life. At the 2021 annual shareholder meeting for Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett actually showed slides, and these slides are pretty interesting. If you do not know who Warren Buffett is, he is the man, the myth, the legendary investor, and the Oracle of Omaha. Now, he is classified as the sixth richest man in the world, and he is the CEO of Berkshire Hathaway. And in the investing community, this guy is a legend. I'll tell you that. Yeah! In the first slide, he showed the largest companies that existed in 1989. And then the second slide, he showed us the largest companies that exist today. Now, if we look back in 1989, the largest companies on this list were actually from Japan. Bonita. And a lot of the companies in Japan were seeing higher stock prices just because they were going through a whole bull market there. Interesting enough, on the 29th of December, 1989, the Japanese stock market index actually went as high as 38,000. And that was a milestone that proved to be the last hurrah Hooray! of the country's asset inflated bubble economy a period of ostentatious consumption and overconfidence in the infallibility of japan now a lot of people thought that the japanese stock market is going to be superior than other countries <clears throat> built different and all the companies in japan would be thriving in the next couple years interesting enough we actually saw the stock market plummets losing more than $2 trillion in value by December 1990. Now that's a lot of damage! And if we fast forward to today, we can see that a lot of the companies in America are actually doing really, really well as we've been in a bull market for the past 10 years, driven by tech like Apple, Amazon, and Microsoft. Now take a look at the largest company in 1989, which was a Japanese company called Industrial Bank worth $104 billion. Today, our biggest company is worth 2.05 trillion dollars and that company is apple the product you're probably watching this video on you guessed it <laughs> you was right now going from the largest company of 104 billion dollars all the way to 2.05 trillion dollars that's roughly a 20x from 30 years ago now looking at the smallest market caps on this list, in 1989, there was a company called Merck & Co, which was valued at $30 billion. Today, the smallest company on that list is LVMH Moet France, and that is more than a 10x from where we were in 1989. And if you do not know, the CEO Bernard Arnold is the second richest man in the world, but the number one richest in fashion. Or should I say, fashion. Is that how they say it? Because I don't know. <laughs> You stupid. But if you look at the lists from 1989 to today, you got a question. Why is the market cap rising for all these companies so much so fast? I don't think you have any idea how fast I really am. The one word is the I word and I didn't really want to say it, but you know what? I'm about to say it. Inflation. Inflation has been right in front of you this whole entire time. And as we print more money, your money is being worth less and less as time goes on. Trash. Now this would mean that you would have to pay higher prices on your goods and services that you are paying normally. Now we've already seen this with the McChicken, don't get me wrong. That guy was worth a dollar back in the day, like a dollar thirty or something. And today, it's I went the other day, it's worth two dollars and eighty cents. I am now going to pay two dollars and eighty cents for what cost me almost a dollar almost two years ago. 
It's absurd. Bring it back, McDonald's. Come on. No money on my car. And if you think about it, it's this whole snowball effect where the government prints more money, there's more money in the supply, meaning that we have to spend more money to get the things that we want to get, and that money goes towards corporations, and corporations are able to obtain a higher market cap overall. And that's inflation. I know it's going to sound crazy, but I'm going to say it now. In the next 5, 10, 20 years, we're going to see companies that are going to have a normal market cap of trillions of dollars. Yes, Ch -ch 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 trillion dollars. It's going to be the new norm as more money is being printed over time and just more money is going toward these corporations. Now, what Warren Buffett showed us was actually just a warning that anything can happen in the world and everything is unpredictable. Back in 1989, we actually saw companies on this list be mainly Japanese companies. But today we saw the US companies being on that biggest company list. We got them. And that's a really big shift from where we were 30 years ago. How will the next 30 years look for us? Will the US economy do well against other economies like Japan, China, and maybe Korea? Who knows, right? Yeah. But just be prepared to expect the unexpected. And we really don't know what's going to happen in our future. So just be ready for that. I'm ready. Now in the shareholder meeting, Warren Buffett actually made an argument for index funds. He said you want to be aboard the ship, specifically a ship, because all of these ships are going towards a better promised land in the future. Yes, queen, yes, queen, yes, queen. Now he stated that you couldn't help but possibly do well if you bought a diversified group of equities. And by diversified group of equities, he just means ETFs and index funds. Now he stated that having a diversified group of equities is actually the place to be over the period of a long term. And we know that the stock market only goes up as time goes on. So this is a really good place to put your money. He also stated that people really get caught up in these really popular industries and they try to sell these IPOs and SPACs. But as we know, IPO probably means it's overpriced. Boy, if you don't. Everybody this year and lastly has been really excited about IPOs and SPACs. Now, everybody's been throwing their money into these IPOs because there's so much excitement around them. So excited. Now, in the past couple of weeks, we've seen IPOs and SPACs have a really nasty pullback. <laughs> And this is just the market realizing that these companies can't really sustain a large amount of growth for the amount of sales and revenue that they're bringing in. And likely if something is more overpriced, investors don't really wanna buy that. Warren Buffett even mentioned that people disregard earnings and sales numbers because they really gotta look at those numbers to see how well the company's valued. A lot of people are just making investing decisions based on popularity and based off that one guy that they sat to on the bus that was talking about this really cool stock. But at the end of the day, valuation matters and we should really be looking at companies based on their earnings and their sales revenues just to see how much they're bringing in in relative to how much we're paying for that company. So overall, just to recap, I really wanna stress these three points. The world is unpredictable and always be ready for surprises. Try to refrain from making investing decisions based off hype popularity and lastly how much you are paying for a company in relation to their earnings will always matter and valuation will always matter wrapping up this video i hope you guys were able to gain some sort of value from watching this video and if you did please remember to drop a like and subscribe to the channel it really helps out a lot so please do that but remember to only invest in the best peace out